Welcome to Inside Communications. I'm your host, Mike Bako, and today we take the show on the road. We're at Quinn & Co., and we're going to take an inside look at this. This is the purple couch, the creative purple couch. Today on Inside Communications, our guest is Florence Quinn, coming up next. Florence, thanks for joining us today, and thanks for having Inside Communications at your firm. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you here, Mike. So we're here on the purple couch. Yeah. It instantly brings a smile to your face. You're known for the purple couch. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, we decided when we moved at one point that we didn't want to have a conference room. It was too boring and too corporate for our culture. So we went shopping for an interesting couch to make the room feel a little bit more homey, a little bit more relaxed, and we ended up with this great purple couch. And then someone wrote an article about Quinn and Company and talked about the bohemian purple couch <laughs> in the dream room. So we ended up naming our conference room the dream room. So we had a purple couch in the dream room. And then it caught on and clients started saying to us, can you go into your dream room, sit on your purple couch and come up with some great ideas for us? So it just became a symbol of our creative thinking and, and an icon for the firm, really. And how important is that to foster that idea of of what your firm is really about, even though it's tied to this couch, but it's a whole attitude and, and mindset that the firm has. Yes, um, being creative is a thing that makes me passionate about PR. It's a thing that drives me personally. As a kid growing up, I was always interested in business and art. I actually used to do art. So when I made a beeline for New York, from New England, where I grew up, my goal was to find something that was artistic and business oriented. And at first I thought it would be advertising, but it was too pigeonholed. You were either a creative person in advertising or you were in trafficking. And then I landed in PR, and PR is a wonderful combination of business and creativity. So that being my passion became the signature of Quinn and & Company. And honestly, we didn't sit around and say, what is the signature of Quinn & Company? It happened organically and authentically, and I think that's important for all brands to realize or for anybody who's birthing a brand or growing a brand, whatever your brand positioning is, it really needs to be something authentic to who you are. So the goal of the firm you're working with, whether it's a PR firm, a branding firm, or an ad agency, their job is to help you realize what your authenticity is. And sometimes it's right under your nose, and you just don't realize it. Well, what advice can you give to some of these brands that are trying to come up with this idea? Should they be doing market research? Should they be doing internal research, talking to their creative team, the real pulse of the organization? How can someone find that, that rhythm, that idea of who their company, their brand is going to be? The first thing, when I do trainings on the topic of creativity, the first thing I say to people is forget whatever industry, forget that you're in the industry you're in. So for us, since we work in travel, real estate, and food, wine, and spirits, I say the first thing to do is to forget that you're in travel, forget you're in real estate, forget you're in food, wine, and spirits, and think about what's important to you. Think about what's important to your friends. Think about what's in the headlines in the newspaper. Uh, think about what people love on YouTube, uh, what they're talking about on Facebook, and that's where you're going to find the essence of what people care about and what people want and look outside of your industry. I think when people think, oh my word, I'm in the travel industry, I'm representing a hotel. As soon as they put themselves in a box, you can almost feel it, right? As soon as I said the word mm -hmm. hotel, oh my God, I'm representing a hotel, it's got a bed, it's got a room. Um, you know, I need to come up with a package because that's what hoteliers do, they come up with packages. Um, so we try to think contrary to what everybody else is doing as well, especially if we're trying to get the media's attention and the buzz, because as we all know, the media loves what's new and different. So a small example of that is for um, here in New York, a lot of hotels will do packages with Broadway shows. But we looked around and we said, oh my God, there are a lot of talk shows here. So we were the first firm to partner hotel with a talk show mm. uh, and getting um, guest tickets to the talk shows. So the New York Times wrote about it because nobody else was doing it. Another great example is everybody comes to New York to shop, so hotels will create shopping packages, go out and shop, and we'll wrap your presents for you when you come back. And we said, wait a minute, it's so crowded out there in the stores. Let's allow people to shop from their hotel 
room or their hotel lobby. So, and this is before social media. So we just put racks of all the uh, catalogs of, of Bloomingdale's, Tiffany's in the hotel so people could shop without leaving the hotel. Mm -hmm. The New York Times wrote it up. How can you do that now with the ever-changing world of social media? People are so tuned into things. How does your firm use Facebook, Twitter, YouTube? How do you utilize all these social media channels? I would say the three basic ways to do it. One is, and then we're all doing it, and none of us know if we're doing it very well, if it's and, success and successful. And that's, that's a real key point, that there are so many people that say, I'll make you a viral video. I'll get you X number of Twitter followers. And yes, they could point to one or two instances, but there's really no, for, no real formula for a viral video or for a campaign that you could specifically point to. So that really speaks to what you're saying. Yes, yes. So the, one of the things is we all, and we're all doing it, we all put our packages out there, our promotions, our recipes. Honestly, how many people care about that? We don't really know, but it's a communications channel and it's there. So we're doing it. That's one way we use it. Another way we use it, which I think is, is interesting, a very interesting area, is we use it as a customer service tool, which is if somebody posts a comment, we respond to it, whether it's positive or negative. So then it becomes a customer relations tool. It becomes an ability to see what customers like and what they don't like, because you get the negative as well as the positive feedback through social media. Have you found that, that brands that you work with are a little bit apprehensive about allowing negative comments to be posted to a Facebook or to a Twitter. How does that work? Oh, that's such a great question, Mike. I mean, it's something that I'm thinking a lot about now because you're absolutely right, especially the hotel industry, the travel industry. They are so deathly afraid of it. So I'm starting to talk to some of our hotel brands and say, look, why would you want to send people off your website and force us all, now I'm speaking of myself as a consumer, to go over to TripAdvisor to learn not only about you and all the negative and positive comments that are there about you, but your competitors. And while I'm over there, P.S., I might find out that one of your competitors is actually voted number one on TripAdvisor, so I might decide to book there instead. So let's come back, bring key people on your website, and see if there is a way to post comments mm -hmm. without, you know, for, you know, in a way that works. And there's got to be a way, because I don't know about you, but I am a huge online shopper. I'm on Pottery Barn, I'm on J. Crew, I'm on Garnet Hill, I'm on Amazon, I'm at Toys R Us, I'm at Best Buy, and I always read the reviews, the customer reviews. Do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. That, that really gives me the nuts and bolts of, of what people are thinking. They're actually road testing the product. So yeah. that, that's really what I want to hear. I want to hear yes. about someone who stayed at an all-inclusive resort. How was the food? How were the drinks? Right. How were people being treated there? So. Actually, there are two hotel brands that are experimenting with this now, posting customer reviews, Starwood and Marriott. So I'm sure all eyes will be on Starwood and Marriott to see how it works. One of them, I think it's Marriott, has actually set up a separate site for the customer mm -hmm. reviews. They're sort of just dipping their toe or their toenail in the water, where Starwood is actually allowing people to post right on the site. But there's got to be, a, when you think about it, like I go to Amazon, I've never seen an inappropriate review. I've seen some negative comments, which are, but they're very appropriate. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, I'd love to know how they control that process. Do they actually edit the reviews? There, there are a lot of uh, things that are going on now with Yelp is in the news now with uh, paid advertisements, paid review type of systems, things like that, where a better review will get pushed to the top and less ones will go yeah. down to the bottom. But how do you deal with that when you're pitching this to a client? Is there... Uh, a give and take in terms of bringing them into this new world where they may be used to just doing print or TV, radio, but you're, do you have to convince them to do this social media outreach, to have comments posted? What's their attitude on all this? Are they seeing the light? Well, they're seeing the light in varying degrees because social media is a, a big area. So it's hard to talk about social media as an area. Almost everybody now is familiar with it and feels that they should have a presence in it, and almost everybody does. But there's different ways of doing it. I think, honestly, most people, when they think of social media, it means I have to be on Facebook and I have to be on Twitter. And I have, in, the, in the travel industry, I have to be monitoring TripAdvisor. And probably in the food, wine, and spirits industry, I have to be monitoring Yelp and some of the other social media sites. And in real estate, it's, I have to be monitoring Curb. But that's just such a small piece of it. That's not going to get you a viral video. Mm -hmm. That's not going to get you a campaign like Best Job in the World for Queensland in Australia that we were involved in. 
it's just a small piece of it. And honestly, if I owned a hotel, I would probably be more into I would put my focus on TripAdvisor. And I would really, really think about allowing comments on my own website. Because in the end, that's what you want. You want people on your website. You want them to stay on your website. So I'm a big believer in, in expanding the content of the website. Some people call it branded content. You might have heard that word. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it be cool if travel websites were not just about booking, but they also provided you with all the travel content that's going to help you make your decision. So instead of having to go to this travel magazine and then this, tra this booking engine for this hotel, you sort of get it all in one you place. You get a one-stop shopping situation. Yeah. Let's go inside the Queensland tourism campaign that you just mentioned. Super successful for them. They wanted to have, to have a campaign centered around the best job in the world. Right. 200 different countries sent in over 35,000 applicants for this job. A huge success for them, for you. You utilize social media, you utilize traditional media. Mm -hmm. Let's go inside that campaign just for a little bit. Tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Um, we did not, they, uh, Queensland came to us and said, we're looking for a PR firm in the U.S. to do the PR for this campaign that our ad agency came up with. So that when they described the campaign to us for best job in the world, we said, oh my, that sounds a lot like the search for the chief beer officer that we had created for Starwood Hotels a while ago before social media even existed. They said, oh my God, we can't believe you're the ones who did that. Mm -hmm. That was sort of the genesis. That was the idea for best job in the world. Best job in the world was created by an ad agency in Australia. So they came to us to do the PR. And we, we, we knew it was huge and wonderful, especially in, the, in, the, in this age of social media. Mm -hmm. So we came on board, and we understood that the, we needed this to go worldwide. So we actually did not give it to a social media outlet first. We gave it to Roy. I almost don't want to tell you this because it's so key. In industry secret, inside <laughs> secret. Let, let's talk about it in, in broad terms. And yeah. they came to you. You had this idea. The genesis was already there. Walk us through just the, the nuts and bolts of when it was actually going on to the very end where you got millions of dollars worth of media. Oh, yeah, over 11 the, million. Over 11 million, a success by, by any measure. Just talk, yes. okay. tell us a little bit about their reaction. to. No one ever campaign. dreamed it would be as big as it became. So they came to us with the idea. People, anybody could apply, send in a video to a channel on YouTube that was set up and apply to be an island caretaker for six months that paid $100,000. And it happened, now this is very important, it happened at a time in our economy when people were losing their jobs. Remember in 2008, 2009, some people called it a recession. So it became viral and of great interest to people because people were losing their jobs or they had a family member or a friend who was losing their job. And if they weren't losing their job, they were unhappy in their job. So it, it really hit a chord in everybody. And this somewhat goes back to what you were saying before, monitoring things that were in the news, trying to find the pulse of what people are interested in. And yeah. it certainly seems like you did. Well, we did, but this was actually by accident, this one. It just so happened that when Queensland finally got the program put together and was ready to launch it, they launched it during a recession. So it mm -hmm. worked, and it was great. So people sent in the videos, and, and then people were then Queensland chose the finalists, a certain number of finalists, and then allow, and then posted them and allowed people to vote. As you can imagine, the voting concept is key, 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 key to making anything go viral. Because then, if, because of if all the applicants, in order to win, asked all their friends and family to vote. And that's really driving traffic to people that might not be aware of it, like the idea. Even if they don't know the per they may send it along to someone else. So there's really this interactive component. Right. And you want to help this person you know. It's mm -hmm. not just a brand reaching out to you and saying, go to my Facebook site and like me. It's somebody you want to help. So there's a real interactive component to it. It's not just a matter of pushing out this idea. It's about engaging people it's with the key. idea. It's key. It's key. And it's being done on TV now. I don't know if you watch The X Factor mm -hmm. or American Idol. Sure. The voting piece of that is key to the success of that program as well. Really, yeah, interactive. It gets people involved and excited. So that was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then people set up their own social media sites to get people to vote for them. We did set up Twitter. We set up Facebook. We got over 3,000 uh, 3, Twitter followers. 
Um, their goal, Queensland's goal, was to get 400,000 visitors to their website in one year. We had over one million in two days. A it success crashed by all their measure. servers. This is the first time that, or one of the first times that you would want technical difficulties on yeah. your website <laughs> because it's such a successful campaign. Florence, thanks for having us in your office. The Purple Couch, so much creativity and inspiration that you were able to give our viewers. Thanks for having us. Oh, in your it's my today. pleasure, Mike. Thank you for coming. Thank you.